So this is my next project. My uh, wife got me this DG808 as an anniversary gift from Aloft Hobbies. It's 4.5 meters, if you can't tell. Like, it's pretty close to touching the corners of my shop. That side over there, I don't have the uh, wingtip extension on. It's just, it's not glued on yet. But yeah, 4.5 meters. That's like, what is that, 15 feet? It's crazy. That's just taped on there. In a minute, I'll go through some of the parts. But this thing is nuts. Like, here's my hand just going in there. I mean, look at all the room in here. So it's actually in setting this thing up is not really that intimidating. It's the thought of landing something like, I don't know, the dry weight is 4.8 kilograms. Sheesh. Um, so this is mainly a slope sore. It can do thermal, they said, but mainly it's made as a slope sore. But I don't want to toss this off the cliff as it's maiden. I want to be able to go to a nice club. So I picked up one of these nice top model power pods. It is going to, let me zoom this out here. There we go. That, I need to make a hole right there. It'll probably sit down somewhere like that. I want it to have enough space to spin up to an 18 inch prop. Uh, my plan is initially a 16 inch prop. That'll give me 5.1 Kilograms of thrust, if that's not, a not enough, I'll, I can go up to bigger motor, bigger prop. But essentially there's a um, aluminum spar that goes up the center of this. And so that will come down and mate with a wooden plate here. And uh, there'll be a, a nut on the bottom. So it actually will be removable if I want. So we're going to have that right around CG so it won't adjust the CG too much. Um, one thing with the motor being high is you're going to get some nose pulling, you know. I'm not sure if it's up or down. I can't remember. It depends on where it, what side on CG is. So that'll be something I'll have to be careful of. And that'll have a 5200 5, size 6S pack. I think that'll be about five minutes of flight, but really just needs to get me up in the air. Okay, so here's uh, the right wing off and I just wanted to point out that it does have speed bait speed brakes or whatever you want to call them there they they pop out pretty far here's the other wing so you can see the bottom and as you can see it's got uh, full span controls so uh, they're not very deep but they're they're long there's a lot of them so there's flaps and ailerons now out here I was gonna go with all fairly cheaper they're high quality but they're cheaper um, servos. They're about 52 grams. These Power HDs, I think they're yeah, 18, 12 MGs. I think they do almost like yeah, 16 to 20 kilograms. Um, they're cheaper. I was going to go use this across all of them, but the depth out here for the aileron, ailerons isn't quite enough. It just barely those would fit. And I decided to go with higher quality servos for the ailerons and the elevator, the main one. So these are about, I think these have seven and a half kilograms thrust, which is totally enough, but they are a much higher quality KST servo for the ones I'll be using all the time and will control flight. Um, I went with some smaller servos for the uh, speed brakes, mainly so that they don't draw a bunch of power like a larger one was because it's got to keep that under tension because the wind's trying to pull that out all the time. So uh, I was told to get a smaller servo there so it doesn't have a large draw on it. <clears throat> um, you can see this is solid steel. It's a hefty wing spar. And then on the end you have the matching holes and where the wires come out. And I found there is a pretty large path. There's not um, like a pull string, but there's a very large path that goes all the way down here. So yeah, I'll just take a minute or so to work something down there and 
pull all of this. And you got to think about that. That's probably <laughs> three meters and then two more there. That one, I'm going to have two servos going all the way back there. So I got a whole bunch of uh, servo, wire, servo wire in prep. And then just to show how these wingtips go on, these are actually molded fiberglass or pla yeah, fiberglass. Um, I'm going to paint these before I put them on, but then they just match. Come on, get into focus on, on the end there. Okay, looking at the tail, you can see it's already got some nice uh, nuts screwed in on there. So the horizontal stabilizer is actually removable. Um, just sits on, sits on there like that. Um, there'll be down here, there will be a, a secondary receiver and a servo in the very bottom that will control the rudder. And then up around here is the servo that controls the uh, the elevator. Let me grab that part. So this little contraption here actually slides into, or it goes like this, other way. Around. Slides in there. That gives it structure internally from twisting and squishing, but it also holds the um, elevator servo if you can imagine it like that so somewhere towards the bottom uh, in the instructions they have you putting um, the uh, rudder servo on this little tray like right in here and you have like a pull pull uh, string system that comes back and pulls the rudder but i've been told that's a pain to deal with so i gotta figure out somewhere down here to mount the servo servo for the uh the rudder uh and then there'll be basically three wires going up there two servos and the uh backup receiver okay let's go over the rest of the things that came in the kit came with nice instructions they're pretty minimal but really this thing's so big um you know, it's really not too hard to see what you need to do. You have lots of room in there. Um, there's actually a couple build threads online I found too. Uh, let's see, it came with um, some hard plastic, really hard, thick plastic uh, servo covers. Those are nice. Uh, came with some, <clears throat> I guess, scale decals. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them or not. I cut my own decals. I think I'm going with a red red theme, so I might just use those to uh, see the example. Um, these are the rest of the parts for this top model power pod. Um, if you can imagine, this needs to be taken off, but this will basically go in there like that. Um, this nice spinner goes on there. And then a, a folding prop will go back here. So it'll fold backwards because the direction of flight is that way. So it'll be a, a pusher. So when it stops spinning, the, they will fold back in this direction. So quite a lot of room in there. It's got a spot for the uh, cables. Might have to drill a hole there, but the cables will come down. The ESC will be inside of the ship. And so motor mount base plate, everything to keep it in there structurally. Pretty nice. Um, this here is the rudder, molded fiberglass. There's some uh, parts, pieces that s snap onto these pins in there. And then those pieces get screwed in to, uh, let me find it. They, uh, these have some holes right here and here where those they snap in there and you glue it in place so that's the rudder here's a closer look at those wingtips they're they're really big i mean you can see how big that is really nice molded pieces um let's see what else oh yeah there's a baggie of parts this cable here was what was for the pull pull um, I'll show the canopy in a minute. It does come with a canopy lock. Um, all the bits and bobs 
to do all your controls, even the pre-made control rods. Nice little pack of stuff. I'll probably use it all. It looks fine. Um, here's the 16 by 10 folding prop I got for it. Um, these I might add. These are wing locks. Wing locks. One side goes in the wing. One side goes in the fuse. You actually need this wedge to break the wing apart once it's together. I'll probably use a combination of this and tape around the, the seams of the wings to keep them on. And here's the radio setup I'm going to be using. It's a FR Sky TD Tandem. That's what the TD stands for. R18. That'll be the primary. This is, uh, what is this called? Oh yeah, it's a Tandem MX. This is going to be my backup. This will be back in the tail. Now, if you don't know what Tandem is, that means they have 2.4 and 900 megahertz. And they're talk it uses both of them at the same time. It can switch between them. It's getting telemetry between the two. Um, and so, you know, the idea is that if there's a bunch of stuff on 2.4 around, it can switch to 900. And then the idea with the backup is if for some reason this is can't talk, this one can talk still, and it'll send the signal to here and still control your plane. So the nice thing about this is it has, I mean, eight, the 18 stands for 18. It's got 18 plugs. Those plugs can be anything that you want. You can go into the radio and you can pick any one of these and say it's S port, F port, S bus, you know, whatever. Um, two, it also has two uh, XT30, that's two 30 amp plugs. I'm gonna be using two uh, 3000 milliamp life packs. And so it'll pull from both of them. So uh, you effectively have 6,000 milliamps, which is probably overkill, that's kind of the idea. But also if one battery dies, you have the other one. Um, it's got other things you can do with it. I didn't really need it, but just for kicks, I grabbed uh, this is the on off switch. So when this is in there, the receiver is dead. And when you want to launch, you pull that and the plane is on. So I don't know. It's kind of. I couldn't resist. What else about this? So, oh, yeah. Another couple of nice things about this is all FR Sky receivers by default will send the battery pack that whatever voltage is powering your receiver any of the fr square receivers it just sends that voltage back to your radio so because i don't have any device in between my battery and the receiver like an esc won't be powering this i won't have a step up or step step down converter the batteries will be straight plugging this so whatever the voltage this is saying back at the radio is the actual pack of voltage but um this also tells you the amp draw, which is really interesting. I've never found a receiver that just does amp draw built in. So I can set up warnings for if the amps jumps to a certain amount. Like once I get a couple of flights in, I know what the normal amps are with all my servos. Uh, this is because only the servo amps will be going through this. So if all of a sudden I get a bad servo, I can set a warning. Like if it jumps above 10 amps, I can just have the radio start giving me an alert and telling me what that is. Um, so I could monitor milliamp usage, like all of that. And that'll give you, you know, a lot more confidence in your flying and whether or not you should land or not. Um, too, with the FR Sky stuff, you always have, you know, RSSI and uh, link strength or whatever they call it. So, yeah. Should help with confidence and flying around and knowing when to land. Here is the canopy. Um, this piece here is the part that perfectly mates onto the fuselage. This is the part touching the fuselage. So this is the part you'll take off. And then this is uh, some kind of plastic molded plexiglass. So essentially I need to find where it sits perfect it's right around that area kind of then 
trace around, cut the excess off, and then use canopy glue to glue those two parts together. And I'll probably mask the outside of this plexiglass and paint it white because this, this is kind of a little off white. It's not the same color as the fuselage. And then put a pin here, put the canopy lock somehow on the back. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. It's gonna take me quite a while to go through this thing. And think, even thinking about maidening it is kind of scary, but it's gonna be awesome.